Welcome from St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Ventura, California. Today we offer an online worship service for the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. You won't need a bulletin, just follow along with the service on the screen. The words in bold are the ones we'll all say together. The service begins with a hymn that you'll see on your screen. We invite you to join us in singing. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. 
The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel, and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. With justice you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not profit by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate in your heart any one of your kin. You shall reprove your neighbor, or you will incur guilt yourself. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response appointed for today is Psalm 1. We will read it responsively, whole verse by whole verse. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. A reading from the first letter to the Theologians. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated as Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeals does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak, not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with the words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. of my mouth and the signs from our hands and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable to you O lord our strength and our redeemer amen good morning everyone and welcome so i'm coming to you today from my study at home where we've been recording sunday school lessons for the children so that's what this background is all about we've been talking with the children about well, the same lessons that you've been learning in church are what we're talking with the children about. So we've got our sign here that reminds us God loves you. And by the way, God loves you too. God loves every one of us. And that's so important for us to know, for us to learn, for us to understand. Let it filter into your whole being that God truly loves you. And then let it filter into you that God loves everybody else too. That's really a part of what happened in today's gospel lesson, isn't it? So we had in our gospel today, the religious group, the Pharisees came to Jesus and they came and asked their tricky question. One group after another has been coming to Jesus and asking their tricky questions. As I was explaining to the children, we're in the final week of Jesus's life. We're near the end of the church here. We're near the end of the gospel of Matthew. We've been studying Matthew since we're in year A in the church right now. And so we're almost to the conclusion of this. Jesus is in his final week. He's sitting in the temple. He's teaching, he's praying. And one after another, these religious groups have come and posed their questions to him. And they've been trying to trip him up. And the gospel writer's been telling us that that they come to try and deceive him. What they really want is for the people to continue to follow them. But the people have been following Jesus. And in their minds, Jesus is nothing more than some country prophet who happened to stumble into the temple and begin to teach and preach. And the people somehow have been following him. And they don't see him as someone who has authority. And so they want to challenge him they're trying to get him to trip up and say or do something to embarrass himself. They're trying to get him to say or do something that would make the people think, oh, yeah, I don't want to follow him anymore. I'm going to go back to following the usual religious leaders. But one question after another that's been posed, and Jesus has had a clever, interesting answer for every one of them. And so far, nobody's been able to 
trip him up. So today the Pharisees come and they ask him, of all the commandments, all of the 600, over 613 um, laws in the Jewish tradition, as well as the Ten Commandments, of all these laws that, that they all at that time tried to follow and tried to, I don't know about you, I, I would find it hard to even remember that many laws, but of all those, which one's the greatest? That could be a tricky question, but it wasn't for Jesus. And what's interesting is Jesus did not answer in a way that was new or different. Jesus actually answered in a way that wasn't radical at all. Jesus's answer was just exactly what you would have thought, that a learned religious scholar of the time would have answered. So when they came and said, which of the laws is the greatest? Jesus answers, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and they're stunned because he didn't trip up. He didn't answer in some way that ruined his reputation. He answered in exactly the way that anyone who held those ancient Jewish traditions as sacred and valued them deeply would have answered. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is a part of the commandment with which devout Jews were very, very familiar. It's called the Shema. It's Judaism's most fundamental and ancient, most widely recited law. The Hebrew word Shema means hear. In ASL, we do this. It means pay attention. You can find more about this in your Bible. Great place to look. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. It goes on and says, these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children. And you shall talk of them when you sit in your house. And when you walk by the way, and when you lie down and when you rise, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they should be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. These words are the centerpiece of a Jewish prayer and a Jewish daily life. They were to be among the first words that anyone spoke in the morning and among the last words that they spoke every night. It was taught to children. So it was some of the first words they ever learned how to say. And the thought was that it would likely be among the last words that they would ever say in this world. Are you getting how really, really important this was to them? Reciting the Shema twice a day is a mitzvah, a religious commitment. And have you ever seen a mezuzah on a Hebrew um, home? It's on the doorpost, and it, it actually, mezuzah is Hebrew for the word doorpost. And inside that thing that's a little bit at an angle on the doorpost, inside there, there's a teeny tiny little scroll, and on that scroll are these same words. Talking about loving the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. The mezuzah is not a good luck charm, and it really doesn't have anything to do with the lamb's blood that was smeared on the doorposts in Egypt. People get it confused with that. Uh, people who are not Jews, obviously. You may see people who have them will touch it and then kiss their fingers as they either enter or exit their home. They'll touch that on the doorpost and kiss their fingers. And they do that to show respect for God and respect for this really important commitment that they make to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. The Pharisees, in our story in the gospel today, and this expert in the law, that's an expert in Jewish law, who pose this final questions, shake their heads, astounded 
that Jesus would respond this way. They were expecting something very different. And before they leave, Jesus stops them and he asks them a question. And this question seems to be a really, really easy one too. He asked, what do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? And the Pharisees answered, ah, the son of David. No problem there. Of this, they were certain. Simple question, no problem. Whose son is he, the Messiah? The son of David. So Jesus asked them another question. He said, if David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? Sons would certainly call their father's Lord, but fathers would never call their son's Lord. And they thought, and they thought, and they didn't know how to respond. Jesus had caught them up in a bind. What do you think Jesus's point was in bringing this up in the first place? Maybe that worldly expectations and smug answers don't hold sway with God. Jesus came to tear open the narrow-minded interpretations to reveal that God loves everyone. He came to show that all are welcome. So whose son is the Messiah? Well, God's son, of course. Unfortunately, the Pharisees couldn't see what he was trying to teach them. They couldn't accept it from someone like him. And so they walked away. And from that time on, we're told, no one dared to ask him any more questions. How sad. If Jesus was standing in our church, I'd want to ask him a whole lot of questions. They had the Messiah sitting right in front of them. This is the person, the one for whom they had prayed for day after day for generation after generation. And now he was right there with them. And their narrow-minded interpretations kept them from being able to open their eyes to see what was right there. This is one of the reasons why I love the Episcopal Church. We welcome all. And because we welcome all, we take a little bit of a risk. Because our interpretations, our ideas, our expectations can be shared and challenged. And through our conversations, I think they stretch to accommodate our growing understanding of just how infinite God's love is. We're people on a journey of faith together. We're trying not to be so presumptuous just to say that our way is the only way or that we know somehow better than somebody else knows. We're just invited on a journey to explore and grow in our faith together. We have one another to study with and to answer to, and I think there's a great benefit in that. I think it's far better than if we just kept to a small group of people, especially people who would only agree with us. There's a risk in that. If you're only with people who agree with you, then you need to get really comfortable because those people will just keep validating what you already think is the truth. They're gonna reinforce your narrow Jesus taught us to expect more, to do more, to love more, and to recognize that God's love is stronger, and deeper, and more just, and more powerful, and more amazing than we could possibly know. Let's talk a little bit about today's psalm. Today was Psalm 1. I, I love Psalm 1. The very first of our Psalms and in it, I find an invitation for all of us. Those who delight in the law of the Lord are like trees planted by streams of water. They yield fruit and seed that season and prosper in all they do. Here's the challenge. Let's see if we can think of ourselves as being trees planted by streams of water. Let's see ourselves bearing fruit spreading compassion, sharing the love of God, and shining with the light of love. What would it take for you to be well-rooted in God? Maybe 
reading scripture, listening to music, enjoying beautiful artwork, opening up to the things that inspire us, or maybe praying more or praying more deeply when we pray, whatever it is, it would help you to feel like you were well rooted in God so that you could feel like you were one of those trees planted by streams of water. Whatever that is, make that a priority for yourself because we got a lot of growing to do. And unfortunately, the storms around us just seem to keep coming. They just keep, they've been relentless lately. So what are we going to do? Well, let's get ourselves better rooted. Let's be more deeply rooted in God so we can weather the storms. I hope that things are going to clear up soon. I'm going to get better and better and better. But you know what? No harm in being deeply rooted in love, in the love of God. And I really think that's what we need to spend some time and effort working on, especially as we work our way into the holiday season. But so many things pull on our attention. And yet, what are we celebrating? We're celebrating All Souls Day coming up, which of course is the day after Halloween. And we're celebrating Thanksgiving, a wonderful day set aside for giving thanks to the Lord. That's very important. And then Christmas, the incarnation of the Lord. This is the most holy season that we're entering into. So see what you can do about incorporating into your life right now, whatever it is you think it would take for you to feel more deeply rooted in the love of God. Today we are nine days from an important presidential election. We're in the midst of a terrible pandemic It's infected over 40 million people worldwide, and it's taken the lives of over a million people. These are indeed challenging times. Now, the church doesn't take sides politically, but we do everything we can to live into our baptismal commitments and to stand up for justice and respect the dignity of every human being. So we encourage you to vote. As you do, take into account your faith. Try to look past the tricky questions and the narrow-minded competition and open your mind to see how the spirit is working. Consider how your vote can be yet another way that you love God and love your neighbor. Remember, God loves you and God loves everybody else and that that love is bigger and wider and deeper and more powerful than you can possibly. We miss you. We love you. Keep the faith. Go out and vote. Love God. Love your neighbor. Be like a tree planted by streams of water. May your roots grow deeper and deeper. May your love grow ever stronger. And may your light shine even brighter. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. 
Amen. O oh God, your unfailing love has been the source of our strength. Trusting in your faithful love and mercy, we bring our concerns to you. Let us pray for this world God loves so much, saying, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the church, that it would be an instrument of your love, forgiveness, and grace. Let us pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, John and Diane, our bishops, Dick, Liz, and Susan, our clergy. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the global community, that we would learn to live for each other in peace and in cooperation and share collective responsibility. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our local community, for our leaders and essential workers, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer in mind, body, or soul, we remember especially those who are battling the coronavirus and those who have lost their lives during this pandemic. Wrap your arms around them in love and help us each to do what we can to support them. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the silent intentions we hold in our hearts. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Glory be to the Father, and to Jesus Christ the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sin through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please wave to one another or post a comment as a sign of your love, your wish that we all be blessed with God's peace, which is beyond understanding, until we can be together again. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. God's peace to you. Peace be with you. Peace to everybody. Greetings and peace. I'm, I did not ever think that we would be away from each other this long from church. But we think about you and we hope that you stay safe and remember that this too will pass. So, peace. So, hi. This is Roberto Butler. I am here at the cross. A uh, beautiful view today. Uh, just spending some time here doing a uh, Bible study reading. Uh, focusing on Trusting God uh, by Jerry Bridges. Uh, definitely recommend it. It's been a good book for me to read. Um, Hope you all are doing well. Love you. Bye. Hello and welcome. A great big welcome to all of you, whether you're a regular member of St. Paul's and maybe have been for years, or you just recently found us on the online services. We're really glad that you're here. Thanks for spending some time with us and joining us as we worship and praise the Lord. A few announcements. Uh, I'm going to be out for a few weeks, uh, beginning on November 1st. I'm scheduled to have 
another surgery, unfortunately, I need for my neck. I've herniated two more discs in my neck. And so I'm scheduled for a two level disc replacement surgery. I plan to, uh, my surgery is on the 9th of November. And I plan to return in time for Christmas. So I look forward to being with you all for Christmas. And I leave you in very capable hands. Reverend Liz is going to be here to do streaming services and take care of all of you while I'm gone. So I'm very grateful for that. The church services are going to continue online at least through January. So you just know what to expect from us. Um, we're going to have a meeting of our reopening committee. That's a group of people that advise the ministry about the needs of the congregation and keep them updated on the most current guidelines for safety. Our next meeting will be November 4th at 6 p.m. on Zoom, and you're invited to join us. If you'd like to speak with us about what your needs are or what your thoughts are, we're very happy to have you join us at that meeting. Uh, information about it is in your e -books. We have wonderful Sunday school lessons that are being shared each week with our children and our families. They've also been added to our YouTube playlist if you would like to go and check them out or share them with anybody. Cheese or pepperoni? That's the important question our youth group is dealing with this week. We're getting ready to host a family fun Halloween pizza party on Zoom. How can you have a pizza party on Zoom, you might be asking? We're having pizza delivered to each of their homes. It's going to be great fun. And so if your family has a 6th through 12th grader, please let us know how many people in your family would like to participate. And if you prefer to have cheese, or pepperoni. Our pledge campaign is in its final weeks and how much you pledge is up to you but we really want to encourage every member of St. Paul's to please pledge to support the ministry of this church in the upcoming year. We have probably never needed it more. 2021 is going to be a challenging year. Most of our tenants run programs for children and have been impacted by the pandemic so far, we've been blessed, and we're so grateful to all of our members who have continued to be faithful in their pledges and in their donations, even people who have just found us recently online, who kicked in a few dollars to, through our giving on our website. We're so grateful to you. You've really helped to keep us going through this last year. Um, but we need to begin to do some planning. The reason why we ask for your pledge, rather than just asking you to give to the church, is so that we can do responsible financial planning. We need to know that we'll be able to keep our staff and pay our bills for the coming year. And we hope that you can help us to do that. So members of St. Paul's, if you've already pledged, thank you so much. If you haven't pledged yet, please do. We'd love to receive your pledge today. If you aren't a member, but you'd like to support our ministry, well, thank you so much for that. If you're a member of another church, please remember to support that church first. And if you can manage to give a little bit more and you'd like to help and support St. Paul's, that would be wonderful. Thank you. We want to encourage you to please keep sending your requests for blessings and your messages of peace. While I'm away, Reverend Liz is going to be live streaming them from the church, um, all the services. And so your messages of peace will be included in your newsletter each week. So be looking for that. But also, when I get back, we're going to be having, for Christmas, two services. This is our plan. I think we're going to be able to accomplish it. We'll have two services. The afternoon service, um, which is generally our family Christmas Eve service, is going to be a live stream church service from our church with live musicians in our church. It's going to be beautiful. And our 10 o'clock carols, as well as our 1030 candlelight Christmas Eve service, will be a fully edited service so that we can include lots and lots of video elements and music elements, as well as all our usual stories and songs and scripture and prayers for Christmas. It's gonna be wonderful. And we would really love to have a whole bunch of Christmas peace messages. So if you wouldn't mind, take out your phone and just grab a little selfie of yourself and your loved ones or make a short video for us and say peace be with you to the congregation and wish them a Merry Christmas. You can also send a picture and I will add a graphic under your picture to wish people peace and Merry Christmas. Whatever you can do, we would love to include you in our Christmas Eve service. It's part of how I feel like we'll be able to be together in some way. And obviously we're gonna to be together 
online, but we're going to miss being together in person. So I think that would really be a wonderful thing if you could do it. Thank you. There are also, also lots of wonderful and important messages in your e-newsletter. If you don't receive our e-newsletter, please send us your email and we will add you to the list. Now for some important prayers and blessings. Today, we are excited to celebrate the birthdays of Ernie Fickerson. Her birthday was on the 14th. Woody Bretz, whose birthday is today, and my granddaughter, Joy, who turned six earlier this week. So if you have a Book of Common Prayer in your home, you might take that out and open it to page 830. And we're going to pray prayer 51 for our birthdays. Let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may the peace that passes understanding abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we ask the blessing of God Almighty to rest upon Ernie and Woody and joy, and everyone who's celebrating a birthday. God bless you and keep you. God be present with you and bless you through the entire year as we go. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Now, we'd like to bless a couple wedding anniversaries. So, Jim and Della Parker are celebrating their 49th wedding anniversary. Yay! And Joan and Daryl Erickson are celebrating their sixth wedding anniversary, which is wonderful. So we're so excited for both these couples. And we invite you to pray along with us. I'm going to be in the Book of Common Prayer on page 831, offering the prayer for those we love. Either follow along in the book or just in your hearts. Let us pray. Almighty God, we entrust all who are dear to us to thy never-failing care and love for this life and the life to come, knowing that thou art doing for them better things than we can desire or pray for. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we ask the blessing of God Almighty upon Jim and Della, upon Daryl and Joan, and the blessing of God Almighty rest upon you, stir you to service, help you to deal with the challenges that we all face in relationships and strengthen you for the days, the weeks, and the years to come. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Happy anniversary to you both. And now I'd like to offer a special blessing for Vicki Paul and Carl Helms, both of whom died recently. They were both longtime members of the church, and we are going to miss them so much. So page 466, let us pray. Almighty God, our Father in heaven, before whom we live, before whom live all who die in the Lord, receive our brother Carl and our sister Vicki into the court of your heavenly dwelling place. Let their hearts and souls now ring out in joy to you, O Lord, the living God and the God of those who live. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now a prayer for all those who grieve. This is page 467. Almighty God, look with pity upon the sorrows of your servants for whom we pray. Remember them, Lord, in mercy. Nourish them with patience. Comfort them with a sense of your goodness. Lift up your countenance upon them and give them. Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, one more blessing, and that is Ernie Fickerson has a brand new baby cousin. His name is Oliver, and he was born on September 28th. And we want to bless Oliver and his whole family. Let us pray. Oh God, you have taught us through your blessed son that whoever receives a little child in the name of Christ receives Christ himself. We give you thanks for the blessing you have bestowed upon this family in giving them all of them. 
confirm their joy by a lively sense of your presence with them and give them calm strength and patient wisdom as they seek to bring him up to love all that is true and noble, just and pure, lovable and gracious, excellent and admirable, following the example of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, baby Oliver, and God bless the whole family. Thank you for allowing us to offer a blessing for you and for all these wonderful occasions. We love you. We thank you. Through Christ, let us continually offer to God the sacrifice of praise that is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. But do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you, the source of light and life, you made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, 
your only and eternal son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. Holy Lord, though we will not consecrate bread and wine this day, we remember the way that Jesus celebrated the first Eucharist and gave us the words of institution. On the night, he was handed over to suffering and death. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. During this time of separation, O God, out of love for you and for our neighbors, we will not gather in our church to sanctify bread and wine, but we ask you to sanctify us, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament in the form of spiritual communion, that we may serve in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day join with all the saints in the joy of God's eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please join us in praying. Dearest Lord Jesus, we believe that you are truly present in the sacrament of the Eucharist, and we desire to offer you thanks and praise as we proclaim your resurrection. We love you above all things and long for you in our souls. Since we cannot be together in our church today to receive the bread and wine made holy, we ask you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus and help us to be mindful that, though we are separate from one another, you are always present and will never leave us. Bless each of us and our entire congregation, as well as all of our neighbors throughout the world. Fill us all with your light and nourish us with your word and spirit until we can be together again. Amen. with your peace you belong O Lord our holy come and fill our hearts with your peace Alleluia come and fill our hearts with your peace you belong O Lord our holy come 
come and fill our hearts with your peace. Hallelujah. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O oh Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for gathering us together today, for nurturing us with word and music, with scripture and prayer. You have fed us and filled us with spiritual communion. Through these holy mysteries, you assure us that we are living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and heirs of your eternal kingdom. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God bless you so that you can be a blessing to others. May Christ bless you so that you can be healers of a world that is hurting. May the Holy Spirit bless you so that you can spread the deep sense of hope that the triune God inspires and gives to the world. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.